in last class we have discussed what is orthogonal set uh, orthogonal set means they are mutually uh, orthogonal every vectors are orthogonal mutually and next we define orthonormal set a orthogonal set to a collection of unit vectors which are orthogonal that is called orthonormal that means sets are mutually orthogonal elements are mutually orthogonal and all are unit unit means their norms are one then only then it is called orthonormal set also we have seen this example this is uh, this example is orthogonal but not or, not orthonormal because uh, it's their inner products are zero if you consider inner product x y that is zero and inner product of x z that is equal to zero and similarly inner product of y z equal to zero so this set is orthogonal but ortho no, not orthonormal because they are not unit if you take the norm of x then that is uh, what is the norm of x norm of x is defined as positive square root of inner product of x x okay so in this case we use the euclidean inner product so that is square root of 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square that is 3 anyway this is not equal to 1 so that's why we say that this is not an orthonormal set but it is orthogonal okay but there is an interesting uh, property of uh, orthogonal set if set is orthogonal then we can transform that orthogonal set to orthonormal if it is orthogonal then we can construct corresponding orthonormal set by dividing uh, each vector by its norm by dividing each vector by its norm uh, so in this last example the last example this is our set x is equal to 1 1 1 y is equal to 1 1 minus 2 and 1 minus 1 0 actually we know that the set is orthogonal but or, but not orthonormal so we can construct the corresponding orthonormal set by dividing its norm okay and what is the norm of x in this case norm of x is equal to <coughs> square root of 3 and similarly what about norm of y norm of y is uh, square root of inner product of y y inner product of y y that is equal to positive square root of 1 plus 1 plus 4 that is 6 okay and similarly what about uh, norm of z that is equal to positive square root of 1 square plus minus 1 square plus 0 square that is the inner product between z and z so that is 2 okay so by dividing norm we get a new set so what about the new uh, the what is the corresponding x the corresponding x is 1 by root 3 1 by root 3 1 by root 3 okay so the orthonormal set corresponding to this given orthogonal set this is the given orthogonal set already we have seen that this set is orthogonal they are mutually orthogonal okay so by dividing its norm we get the corresponding orthonormal set okay so if a, if a set is orthogonal then we can easily construct the corresponding orthonormal set okay by dividing its corresponding norm next uh, we can represent the ortho orthonormal set using this kronecker letter uh, kronecker letter is a standard function this function is defined like this delta ij is equal to 1 if i equal to j otherwise zero if i not equal to j zero for example delta 1 2 delta 1 2 means here i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 2 okay now uh, in this here i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 2 so it is clear that i not equal to j isn't it because 1, 1 and 2 so they are not equal so if i and j the suffixes are not equal then value of delta is zero you got the idea so for example you consider delta 3 3 then what happened here i is equal to 3 j is also 3 so they are equal so in this case 1 that is the meaning of chronicle delta so chronicle delta is defined like this delta i j is equal to 1 if i equal to j 0 if i not equal to j okay this is a very standard function uh, research paper so we can represent uh, 
ortho normal set using Kronecker delta. Okay, so this is the uh, representation of ortho normal set using Kronecker delta function. A set of vectors x1 x2 xn is ortho normal if and only if uh, inner product of xi xj equal to delta ij. Clear? Because first of all, the set should be mutually uh, the vector is mutually orthogonal. Mutually orthogonal means what? Mutually orthogonal means uh, their inner products are zero. That means inner product of x1, x2 equal to zero, inner product of x1, x3 equal to zero, everything inner product of x1, xn equal to zero. Right. So it is clear that in all these cases the surfaces are different. Here x1, x2, x1, x3. So I is, uh, we can take i as 1 and j as 2 like that. Okay. So inner product of xi, xj equal delta ij means whenever i and i and j are not equal, then its value should be zero. That's true. That is the criteria for orthogonality. You got the idea? That is the criteria for orthogonality. Next, uh, ortho normal means orthogonal plus unit vectors. Every vectors are unit. All the vectors, all the vectors should be unit. Okay. So a vector is unit means. For example, you consider norm of x1. Norm of x1 is positive square root of inner product of x1 and x1. Okay, and from this definition, this representation, it is clear that inner product of x1, x1 is delta 1, 1. And what about delta 1, 1? It is 1 because uh, it is this, this, that is the definition of Kronecker delta. Okay, so this is equal to square root of 1. And here, this square root means positive square root. Okay, we know that norm is always non negative. So here the square root means positive square root. So positive square root of 1 is 1. So norm is 1. Okay, this is true for every other uh, vectors. Clear, if you take norm of x, some x10, then what happens? Positive square root of inner product of x10, uh, x10, right? Uh, here i and j both are 10. So what about the value? What is delta of 10, 10? Delta of 10, 10 is 1. That is the definition of Kronecker delta. If i and j are saying, then its value is 1. Okay, so this is equal to again 1. Okay, so using this single definition, we can define orthonormal set. So a set of vectors x1, x2, xn is orthonormal if and only if inner product of xi, xj equal to delta ij or i, comma j equal to 1 to n. That means whenever i and j are equal, its value is 1. That means norm of vectors is 1. Norm of vectors are 1. That is the idea. If i and j are not equal, i and j are not equal, then their inner product equal to zero. That is the concept of orthogonality. So combining these two, this set is orthonormal. Okay, you understand? Clear? Okay. So this is only a represent. This is only a compact representation of orthonormal set. Okay, next uh, we consider a result. An orthonormal set of finite number of vectors is linearly independent. Okay, this is not orthogonal, orthonormal. We know that what is orthonormal. Orthonormal means orthogonal plus unit. That, 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 uh, that type of sets are called orthonormal. Okay, if you consider a set, the proof is very simple. If you consider a set x1, x2 etc xn and we assume that this is ortho normal okay we assume that this is ortho normal okay we have to show that this set is linearly independent then linearly independent means we consider c1 x1 plus c2 x2 etc plus cn xn equal to 0 if it is linearly independent only when if all the ci's are zero okay so we have to show that if c1 equal to c2 equal to etc equal to cn equal to zero then then linearly independent you got it if all the ci's are zero this implies all the ci's are zero then linearly independent so we have to check whether what are what is the value of this c1 what about c1 what about c2 etc Okay, but already we assume that this set is orthonormal. Okay, 
So to find the values of ci, we consider an inner product like this. We consider the inner product, uh, inner product of uh, c1 x1 plus c2 x2 plus etc plus cn xn together with the you consider x1 take x1 okay and uh, this can be written as okay what about our assumption our assumption is this is equal to 0 okay if this is equal to 0 then then all the series are 0 then we can say that they are linear independent okay so our assumption is this scalar product equal to 0 okay this com linear combination equal to 0 so what happened this become 0 x1 isn't it if we assume that this is equal to 0 okay and this 0 stands for the 0 vector because here x1 x2 xn are vectors so there sum is 0 means a 0 vector we know that every 0 vector can be written as like this you can write the scalar 0 into vector 0 comma x1 okay this is vector 0 okay these two zeros are same this is scalar 0 and again uh, this uh, inner product has a property this is a scalar you can take outside 0 into 0 x1 right so what happened here this 0 is a vector 0 this is a scalar 0 okay so what happened is 0 scalar into something we know that this is a real number a real number into 0 that is always 0 so this is a scalar 0 right this is a scalar 0 because scalar into scalar this inner part is a real number so this is a scalar 0 anyway if if we assume that this linear combination equal to 0 then this inner product is 0 you got it next we consider the left hand side okay since inner product has some properties so you can split the inner product using the distributive property that means we can split this like this inner product of c1 x1 comma x1 plus inner product of c2 x2 comma x1 plus etc plus cn xn comma x1 you got it again using the property of inner product we can write this as c1 into x1 x1 plus c2 into x2 x1 etc plus cn into xn x1 okay whatever right hand side right hand side is 0 okay we sim uh, by simplifying by simplifying um, we get the right hand side is 0 okay so c1 into x1 x1 plus c2 into x2 x1 etc plus cn into xn x1 equal to 0 right and uh, what is our assumption our assumption is uh, this given set is orthonormal our assumption is given set is orthonormal so what happened if it is orthonormal means inner product of xi xj equal to delta ij that means whenever suffixes are same its value is 1 otherwise 0 that is a definition of uh, orthonormal set so what happened here this becomes c1 into what about inner product of x1 x1 that is 1 because norm is 1 that's why this is 1 plus c2 into this is inner product of uh, x2 and x1 we know that the set is orthonormal they are mutually orthogonal that means this inner product is 0 that is the that is also, also you can observe this from this Kronecker delta function uh, here uh, i is 2 and j is 1 so they are not equal so this value is 0 okay anyway this is 0 plus etc plus everything is 0 that is cn into 0 equal to 0 so what happened c1 equal to 0 so if you assume that c1 x1 plus c2 x2 plus xn plus cn xn equal to 0 implies c1 equal to 0 okay similarly if you consider instead of x1 we consider suppose x2 then what happened if you consider uh, x2 then this side is same 0 into x2 uh, 0 x2 we can write this 0 as 0 dot 0 into x2 and this become uh, 0 times 0 x2 and 0 is a scalar this is a real number so product equal to 0 so right hand side is always 0 whatever be xi x1 x2 xn whatever be the uh, second uh, vector 
the right hand side is always zero by simplifying the left side what happened if you use instead of a, if you use x2 instead of x1 then this become uh, the change is here this become x2 x1 x2 x2 sorry this is x1 x2 this is x2 x2 etc this become x and x2 clear so only this term is not zero all other terms are zero so that implies c2 equal to zero you got it so in general you can also uh, show this considering some xk suppose you consider uh, in general in general if you consider like this inner part of c1 x1 etc plus cn xn comma some xk okay what happened the right hand side is zero because uh, zero into xk that is zero times zero dot zero xk that is zero dot zero xk that is zero okay what about left hand side by simplification uh, left hand left hand side become uh, c1 into inner part of x1 xk uh, c2 into inner part of x2 xk etc plus some ck the kth value ck into inner part of xk xk etc plus cn into inner part of xn xk equal to 0 and since the given set is orthonormal all these inner product are 0 except this one xk xk that is 1 ok so we get ck into 1 equal to 0 this implies ck equal to 0 this is true for all the k this is true for all k equal to 1 to etc n so what is our conclusion the conclusion if uh, if this linear combination equal to 0 implies all the ci's are 0 c1 equal to 0 c2 equal to 0 etc cn equal to 0 so the given set is linearly independent you got it okay so this is the proof of this set this uh, result is a very interesting result a set is orthonormal then the set is linearly independent okay clear okay okay this is another interesting result if x1 x2 xn is a orthonormal basis for a vector space v then we can write this x as like this for any vector x in v okay so already we know that if a set is orthonormal then it is linearly independent then naturally this set can span some vector space okay every linearly independent set can uh, every linearly independent set is a basis every linearly independent set is a basis for its span right suppose uh, b is a linearly independent set then this b is a basis basis for span of b clear because already b is linearly independent then it is clear that this this space uh, spanned by this b because we consider our space as span of b okay so this b is a basis for span of b okay so anyway this set is orthonormal so it is a basis for some vector space okay then we can write x as every vector in that space can be written like this so otherwise what about these things that means uh, let it be b for take this set as b. you take this set as b then what about this vector inner product of x x1 inner product of x x2 x x n and what about this vector this is called what is the name of this particular matrix what is the name of this particular matrix coordinate yeah actually this is exactly the coordinate of x with respect to b okay so we can easily compute the coordinate if the basis is orthonormal by computing only n inner products okay so that is the one advantage of this result 
we can easily compute the inner product uh, we can easily compute the coordinate by computing n inner products instead of solving n simultaneous linear equations the so solving simultaneous equation is not easy process that is computationally expensive okay so anyway its proof is very simple this is similar to our previous uh, result so okay so here we assume that this is a basis for some vector space v uh, then we know that uh, every vector x can be written as unique linear combination of x i that means c1 x1 plus c2 x2 etc plus c n x n this is possible because this set is a basis this is a basis so every vector is uniquely represented like this clear so next we consider uh, inner product of x x k okay k may be k can be 1 2 etc up to n whatever be x x k then this is equal to inner product of what about what about our x x is like this c1 x1 plus c2 x2 etc plus cn xn comma x k and using the property distributive property of uh, inner product this become c1 into x1 xk etc plus ck into inner product of xk plus cn into inner product of xn xk and also we assume that this is a orthonormal set so x1 xk equal to 0 and everything 0 except this one this is 1 so what happened this is ck so the kth coordinate ck is equal to inner product of xxk so this is true for every k whenever k equal to 1 this c1 equal to xx1 right and similarly when k equal to 2 when k equal to 2 this c2 become x x2 right so that's why they are the coordinates okay so the first the so 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 if x so this is a orthonormal basis then coordinate of this x with respect to the basis is like this x x1 etc x x okay it's a very important result so this is a remark uh, yeah to find the coordinate of a vector in an n-dimensional vector space we have to solve actually we have to solve set of n simultaneous linear equations okay that will take more time in the case of orthonormal basis suppose our basis is orthonormal then the work is reduces to taking n inner products you simply consider only n inner products okay instead of taking instead of solving n simultaneous equations you got it okay so uh, this is uh, this result is uh, very this result is important in the sense of uh, algorithms okay karena uh, programs ok edumbo pettam execute avanayittu is high if you find the coordinate using this method if the basis is orthonormal then we can find the coordinate using this inner product technique okay then the algorithm is uh, much better than uh, if you this technique if you solve the n simultaneous equation it will take more time okay next we consider another algorithm uh, the uh, the idea of this algorithm is we can transform any basis for a finite dimensional inner product space v into an orthonormal basis suppose our basis is a normal basis okay we know that if a set is orthogonal we know that a set is orthogonal then we can construct corresponding orthonormal set by dividing its norm okay here the case is different suppose we consider a basis suppose we have a basis basis b need not be orthogonal we know that that is basis means b should be linearly independent that is guaranteed it is linearly independent 
but there is no guarantee they are mutually orthogonal okay so there is a natural question suppose we have a normal basis then how to construct the corresponding orthonormal basis once we have an orthonormal basis we can easily compute the coordinates okay so it's a very natural question how to construct a orthonormal basis from an uh, from a ordinary basis okay so that is an algorithm actually this is uh, this technique is uh, developed using the concept of projection okay so its name is the gram schmidt orthonormalization process okay it's an algorithm i will explain this step by step suppose we have a set suppose we have a set uh, x1 x2 x2 xn this is a basis for an inner product space v uh, then we have to construct a new set that is orthonormal and it's a it should be a basis for the same vector space v okay that means we have a vector space v and this is our v and v is a basis okay so we are going to construct another set we are going to construct another set that is also a basis this is a basis this also a basis okay but what is the difference between the new basis the new basis should be orthonormal okay both are basis of the same vector space that means that means what that means span of b is same as span of this new set take away o n okay and it should be linearly independent so we are going to construct a new set which is a basis for v as well as orthonormal okay so we denote the new set as like this q1 q2 etc qn okay so we denote the new orthonormal set as q1 q2 qn so how to construct this qis okay we iteratively construct q1 first of all we construct q1 then using q1 we create q2 then using q1 q2 we can create q3 like that okay we iteratively construct each uh, qis from this xis okay so this is an algorithmic algorithm so first iterate uh, the step one step one is like this okay so first we have to calculate r k k okay for k is equal to 1 to etc n so first we assume that k equal to 1 right so first we assume that k equal to 1 this is an iterative process this is true uh, we uh, we run all these steps for each case k is equal to 1 k is equal to etc k is equal to n okay so we are starting from k equal to 1 so first we have to evaluate r k k r k k means uh, r 1 1 so first we evaluate r 1 1 what is r11 r11 is defined as norm of x1 so norm of the first vector is defined as r11 and we know that norm of a vector is positive square root of inner product of x k x okay then then next we compute q k q k in the case of uh, in the, if k equal to 1 then this is q1 what is q1 q1 is x1 by r11 okay r1 r11 is a real value real value real value because it is a inner uh, positive square root of inner product or no so it is a positive non negative real number so 1 by r k k into x k that is our uh, q k ok we set q k as like this then ok then for j equal to k plus 1 k plus 2 etc k n because suppose presently its value is k then for j equal to k plus 1 that means suppose initially k equal to 1 then for j equal to 2 3 up to n you got it okay whatever be the value of k j is starting from k plus 1 initially k equal to 1 so now j equal to uh, 2 so then we compute r k j r k j is defined like this inner product of uh, okay you can easily read like this both are same q k x j because this is r k j so you can easily uh, remember like this r k j equal to inner product of q k x j 
okay we know the inner border symmetric you can write any way, any border no problem okay anyway r k g is equal to inner product of q k x j the uh, we have to compute this r k j for all the j's all the j's from k plus 1 k plus 2 up to n okay for the in the case of k equal to 1 what have in the case of k equal to 1 we have to compute r 1 2 r 1 3 etc up to r 1 n got it okay suppose k equal to 3 suppose presently is k the iteration then k is equal to 3 then we have to evaluate r 3 because k equal to 3 r 3 4 j is starting from k plus 1 so r 3 4 r 3 5 etc r 3 n you got it okay so if it is k the iteration then we have to compute r k j from 4j equal to k plus 1 okay so then last step the last step is okay for j equal to k plus 1 k plus 2 n we replace xj with xj minus rkj qk that means we are going to replace all the remaining xj's now we have a set like this uh, x1 x2 extra xn so we are going to construct a new set okay so now we have q1 when k equal to 1 we have q1 okay and we are replacing all the remaining xis all the remaining xis using this xj's that means we are replacing x2 by x2 minus suppose k equal to k equal to 1 suppose k equal to 1 then we are replacing uh, uh, replace here j equal to k plus 1 means j equal to 2 so we are replacing x2 by x2 minus r 1 2 uh, q2 sorry q1 clear and what about x3 we are replacing x3 by x3 minus r 1 3 uh, q1 etc okay that is the algorithm so if given set is x1 x2 xn is a basis our aim is to construct a new orthonormal basis for the same vector space we denote the new basis as q1 q2 qn okay so first we uh, construct uh, first we uh, com compute q1 using this uh, step compute r11 then q1 is defined like this okay once you get q1 then we are replacing all the x2 x2 x3 xn using this rule okay then in the next iteration we assume that k equal to 2 okay if k equal to 2 you compute r2 2 then you can immediately find q2 okay so now we have next vector q2 then what we will do then we are replacing x3 x4 up to xn using this rule that's the idea okay so each time you evaluate one qi then we are replacing the remaining xis that's the idea okay this thing, uh, these two roots so continuing this up to n times we get a set q1 q2 up to qn and this set is uh, a this set is a orthonormal basis for a given vector space after the kth iteration uh, we get q1 q2 etc qk okay right after the kth iteration we get q1 q2 qk this is a orthonormal set okay up to uh, k vectors are there now it is only kth iteration to find the basis we have to come uh, we have to complete n iteration okay then only we get q1 q2 qn so after kth iteration we get a set q1 q2 qk is a is an orthonormal set and the span of these set that is very interesting uh, property of this new set the span of this q1 q2 qk is equal to the span of x1 x2 x3 x, xk so in general after n iterations we get q1 q2 qn and the span of q1 q2 qn is the same as the span of x1 x2 x3 xn that means these two sets spans the same vector space okay that means the two sets spans the uh, same vector space and we know that this q1 q2 qn are uh, qn is orthonormal so this is a linearly independent set that's why that's why the set q1 q2 etc qn is a basis is a orthonormal basis for v okay 
anyway let's see this algorithm through an example so its idea is like this first we have to compute uh, first we assume that k equal to 1 then we run all these steps next we assume k equal to then we have to run all these uh, steps continuing in this way after n iteration we get q1 q2 etc qn that set is orthonormal basis for a given vector space okay so for example consider uh, this problem then ningal thanne cheyunna ondanal adu clear avathullu all of you please uh, do yourself find the orthonormal set of vectors from the linearly independent set so it is given that this is linearly independent so we know that this set can span something okay what is the span of this set nikus suppose this is b and my question what about the span of b it's a familiar one it is a familiar set what is the span of b what about this vector this belongs to which vector space 1 0 0 oh sorry we can visualize this as a vector in suppose 1 1 0 these vectors are belongs to which vector space r3 we can visualize these vectors are belongs to r3 no problem so my question it is given that these three sets are linearly independent so what about its span what is the dimension of r3 what is the dimension of r3 3 dimension is 3 this is a collection of three linearly independent sets so what about span b so span b should be r3 because dimension of uh, r3 is 3 this is a collection of three linearly independent set so its span should be r3 okay so because uh, uh, all uh, all because this set b is linearly independent and dimension of r3 is 3 so this is a three element set so its span should be r3 okay so anyway uh, whatever be the span that is not a matter anyway it's a linear independent set so we can construct a corresponding orthonormal set which spans the same set so ultimately we have to find a orthonormal basis for r3 okay so we have to find actually an orthonormal basis for r3 okay so uh, what is the step uh, we have four steps first step is second first we have to compute this is the algorithm yeah first we have to compute r k k okay so we have to fi find r k k that is equal to norm of x k then q k that is equal to 1 by r k k into no sorry x k then uh, we have to compute r k j using uh, using using the algorithm qk xj then we have to replace all the remaining xj's we have to replacing all the remaining xj's using xj minus r aj qk this k equal to 1 to x right okay this is our goal so yes start here so first we assume that k equal to 1 okay actually here k we have three vectors we have three vectors uh, x1 x2 x3 
So we have to construct an orthonormal basis Q1, Q2, Q3. Clear? So we have to construct an orthonormal basis Q1, Q2, Q3, iteratively. So this is our X1, this is our X2, this is our X3. So we are starting out, starting from uh, starting our algorithm from k equal to 1. So when k equal to 1, what happened? When k equal to 1, this become first we have to so this is step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4. Okay. So step 1 is we have to compute R11. What is R11? Norm of x1. Right. So that is equal to positive square root of inner part of x1, x1. That is equal to what? That is equal to power root of 2. Clear. Then what about this is our step 1? Then step 2. We have to compute q1. Now our k is 1. Presently our k is 1. So we have to compute q1. So what is q1? q1 is defined like this uh, 1 by r11 into x1. That is equal to here. 1 by square root of 2 into x1. x1 is 1, 1, 0. So, our q1 is like this. So, q1 is sorry. So, q1, q1 is equal to the vector 1 by square root of 2, 1 by square root of 0. Okay. So, this is q1. Then what about third step? Then we have to replace remaining. Then we have to replace the remaining xi's. These are the remaining xi's using these two steps. That's the procedure. Okay. So, we first we have to compute q1. Then we have to replace remaining xi's. Clear. So, we have to replace x2 and x3 using these, these two roots. Okay, so first of all, we have to compute R kgs. So that is our step three. So step three is we have to compute. We have to compute R kgs. So R presently k is one. R kj j equal to k plus one k plus two up to n. So here R one. So we have to compute R12 and R13. Clear. And what about R12? R12 is defined as inner product of Q1 X2. QK XJ. Okay. So that is equal to what is our Q1? Q1 is 1 by square root of 2. 1 by square root of 2, 0. Now, we are going to degenerate the inner product of q1, 1 by square root of 2, 1 by square root of 2, 0, comma, x2, x2 is 0, 1, 1. That is equal to inner product between two vectors that is 1 by root 2 into 0 plus 1 by root 2 into 1 plus 0 into 1 that is 1 by root 2. So R12 is 1 by root 2. Similarly, we have to find R13. So what is R13? That is inner product of Q1 X3. Okay. So Q1 is this one. X3 is this one. So what about the inner product? 1 by root 2 into 1 that is 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root 2 into 0 that is 0 plus 0 into 1 is 0 so 1 by root 2 ok so uh, these two uh, uh, r, r12 and r13 both are 1 by root 2 ok next we have to compute the step 4 using step 4 we have to replace this x2 and x3 ok next we are going to replace this x2 and x3 using the fourth, uh, fourth root so our new x2. So what is new x2? New x2 is equal to x2 minus r12 into q1. 
because presently k equal to 1 and j equal to 2 and 3 okay so when j equal to 2 here j equal to 2 j equal to 2 and k equal to 1 okay so this is equal to what is x2 x2 is 0 1 1 minus r 1 2 that is 1 by root 2 q1 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 and 0 okay so upon simplification this become 0 minus 1 by 2 that is minus 1 by 2 and uh, 1 minus uh, 1 by 2 that is 1 by 2 1 minus 0 that is 1 ok so this is our new x2 ok so new x2 is yes minus 1 by 2 1 by 2 1 similarly we have to evaluate x3 what is x3 x3 work out here. what is x3 what is the formula of x3 x3 equal to what new x3 so here we are going to replace x2 by this quantity similarly we have to replace this x3 replace with what xj is replaced by xj minus rkj into qk so here k equal to 1 and j equal to 3 so what happened x3 minus uh, r13 r13 q1 q1 presently k equal to 1 okay so we have to replace this x3 by x3 minus r13 into q1 so what is its value please evaluate the right hand side then we replace x3 so what is new x3 computer this is our old x3 1 0 1 minus r 1 3 r 1 3 is in by root 2 and what is q1 q1 is 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 0 ok then what is x3 1 minus 1 by 2 is 1 by 2 this is minus 1 by 2 this is 1 ok so this is new x3 ok so you have to repeat the same process same iteration for k equal to 2 and k equal to 3 ok Suppose k equal to 2, then what happened? So, this is our new x2. This is our new x2, and this is our new x3. This is our new x3. Clear. Then Then, you compute it. Q1 is there. Ok. 
ओके इन नेक्स्ट इट्रेशन वी एस्यूम दैट के इक्वल टू टू एस्यूम दैट के इक्वल टू टू देन तो स्टेप वन नंगलो आरंभ ने चाहिए स्टेप वन आर टू टू एंड स्टेप थ्री क्यू टू एंड व्हाट इस क्यू टू अब बार आया हो व्हाट इस क्यू टू आफ्टर सिंपलिफिकेशन व्हाट इस क्यू टू What is Q2? We compute R2 to then Q2. Zero and zero and zero and zero. Zero and zero. Zero and zero. What is R2 to? R2 to and that one. Norm of X2. Norm of X2. This is our new X2. We have to compute. Ah, all the parts are there. Either there or there. We throw out all these old x's. Our present x2 is this one, and this is our present x3. So what is R22? How many are there? Let's see. What is R22? Let's get together. What is R22? What is R22? What is R22? Square root of the square plus the square plus the square. That is, then you take the square root. Root three by two. Yeah, root three by two. Yes, root three by two. Then we have to compute Q two. Q two using this formula one by आर टू टू इंटू एक्स केयर एक्स के मीन एक्स टू दिस एक्स टू क्यू टू इज या और एंट्री कूटे एल द फस्ट एंट्री ऑफ क्यू टू इज माइनस वन बै रूट सिक्स माइनस वन बै रूट सिक्स वाट अब सैकंड एंट्री One by root six. One by root six, correct. Last one. Then root of two by. You know, na two by root six, na varna. Root two by three. Ah, yeah, root two by three. That is two by root six. Yeah. That's correct. Root two by root three, same as two by root six. ओके या टेक्स्ट लू सो इन वे क्यू टू इज माइनस वन बै रूट सिक्स वन बै रूट सिक्स आू बै रूट सिक्स ओके अब सैकंड स्टेप कई ओके दें तेड्ड स्टेप यू हाव टू कंप्लीट आर के जे फॉर रिमेनिंग जे सो रिमेनिंग जे मीन वी हाव ओली वन मोर जे जे ईक् थ्री क्लियर सो इन स्टेप थ्री इन स्टेप थ्री वी हाव टू कंप्लीट ओली वन वैल्यू दैट ईज आर् प्रस वैल्यू ऑफ के Present value of k is two, and the j is from j is starting from k plus one. So we have only one j plus one, that is r two three. So what is r two three? R two three is the inner product of q two x three. This x three is the new x three. This is our new x three. Q two is this one. Okay. So what is the inner product between these two? The numerical value of two. कंप्यूटी So minus one by root six into one by two plus one by root six into minus one by two plus two by root six into one. 
ఎల్ సేమ్ ఇక్కడ సింప్లిఫై వాట్ ఈస్ ఆర్ టూ త్రీ వన్ బై this x3 with the new x3 we are going to replacing x3 with new x3 what is new x3 new x3 is nothing x3 this is old x3 x3 minus r23 r23 into q2 presently k equal to 2 q2 right so what is new x3 this is our old x3 this is old x3 this is new x3 so we are going to replace this x3 by this quantity so you compute this one using this x3 and this q2 and this r r23 compute it okay what is the value what is the value of new x3 new x3 is first entry is 2 by 3 step 2 because our aim is to compute q1 q2 q3 okay now we assume that k equal to 3 so step 1 in step 1 we have to compute r33 that is norm of x3 this is our new x3 we have to 4 t4 cut the board okay this is our new x3 so what about norm its norm is its value is 2 by root 3 value is 2 by root 3 then step 2 we have to compute q3 q3 is nothing 1 by r33 into x3 so that is this 1 by root 3 1 by root 3 minus 1 by root 3 and 1 by root 3 okay so this is the new set q1 q2 q3 and uh, this new set is a orthonormal basis for r3 okay because we are going to we are uh, considering this uh, basis this is a basis this is an ordinary basis for uh, r3 this is not an orthonor this is not an orthogonal basis even it is not an orthogonal basis it is clear that the inner product of these two 1 into 0 plus 1 into 1 plus 0 into 1 that is 1 inner product is not equal to 0 between these two vectors so they are not orthogonal so this is not this is an ordinary this is a ordinary uh, basis so here we constructed a new basis that is q1 q2 q3 
this is q1 this is q2 and this is q3 the advantage of this new set the new set is the new set as q1 q2 q3 is a orthonormal basis for r3 or is an orthonormal basis corresponding to this linearly independent set both spans the same set that's idea okay ओके क्लियर ओके इन अड़ लीस्कोर अड़ता